<laughs> Music Nib Shootout! <laughs> And today, we'll be having a look at no less than four music nibbed pens. What's a music nib? As I understand it, these were nibs developed to give a very consistent inflow to be able to write music, uh, music notes, uh, and uh, a lot of these nibs have three times. And if you have a somewhat flexy nib, then clearly that offers a very nice advantage for your line variation, because if you have two times, as a common and you apply some pressure they will open up a bit but if you have three times and you apply pressure they open up quite a lot and you get a very nice line variation of the pens I'm going to show you today three are contemporary and the fourth one is a vintage pen the first pen I'll cover today is a platinum 3776 with a music nib that's a, um, a solid a, a gold yeah solid 14 karat gold nib. And then we have the Sailor 1911 standard, not the oversized, but the standard, which has a music nib. It's also gold. And then we have the Noodler's Nippon set. Uh, this has a steel three tined nib. And finally, we have the vintage pen, the Waterman 94 with a music nib. Uh, this pen is on loan to me from Aziza, from Gourmet Pens, gourmetpens.com. Um, these are not the most common. Uh, nibs to find, so I was very happy that she uh, lent hers to me. Okay, let's start with this pen. This is, I think, the smallest... Mm, I think it's the... okay, it's on par with the 1911, but it's a fairly skinny pen. The, um, the, 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 um, uh, the, the platinum, I was just signed for a bit because this whole cap was filled with ink, so I just smeared myself with ink. Um, but that's alright. This is the uh, platinum. The platinum has a three-tined music nib, and it is uh, 14 karat gold. And <clears throat> I have had this pen for quite a couple of years. It was one of the first pens that I bought. And what I really like about it is that it has a super smooth nib. Really pleasant to use but no flex whatsoever. This nib is a nail. So, uh, as you may be able to see, it has a somewhat italic grind, so you will get a fairly broad line, but no flex. And as a pen, uh, it's definitely on the small side of the spectrum. I really need to post, to post this to write comfortably with it. Alright, then we have the 1911 Standard. Uh, this is a, uh, for me, it's still a small pen, but it's just a bit more comfortable unposted than the Platinum. Uh, this is a music nib too. This is, uh, off this list, the only two-tined music nib. This is another gold nib, also quite pleasant to use, but, to be honest, I found this one very dry when I got it. So I have adjusted this a little bit. Um, a two-tine nib, also very pleasant to use. Quite smooth, but I don't find it as smooth as the Platinum. Okay, then we have the Noodles Nippon set. As I record this video, this is August 2014. This pen is not yet for sale, but it will be for sale soon, I understand. The Nippon set by Noodles uh, is definitely the biggest pen in uh, this shootout. Uh, I would definitely say this is an oversized pen, especially when you post it, it's huge, uh, but even unposted, it's a very big pen. This has a steel nib, and it is also three-tined, and I think that of the nibs, this is the finest when you don't flex it. And you see it has a very nice triangular shape, two um, uh, slits, and also two ink channels. So in the feed, there are two ink channels to give that really consistent ink flow, and when you flex, to keep up uh, with the ink flow. Now we finally have this Parker, uh, sorry, this Waterman 94. How could I possibly call that Parker? That's a uh, uh, big mistake there. This is another three-tined nib, um, and this is a 14 karat gold nib. Uh, and this is, I think, a little bit less fine than the Noodler's nib, but it is also relatively fine when you use it unflexed. This is what one would call a wet noodle, so a super flexy nib. Okay, 
Uh, I used to do disassembly of all the pens in the shootouts, but I will stop doing that. The reason for that is that I now have the disassembly line, and it seems a little redundant to me to show you how to take these pens apart in a shootout, when I can also just do a very focused, short disassembly line. So from now on, that's going to disappear. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the pens, um, but uh, that is the, the pen sizes. As you can see, the uh, Nippon set definitely stands out in size. Um, the other ones are all roughly the same size. Uh, I think it will be much more interesting to show you how these pens write. That's what I'm going to do next. I hope that's going to be useful, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go with four music nibs. Let's start with the Platinum. 3776. I'm just going to write the Quick Fox. Very smooth writer. And as to line variation, because it's an italic shaped nib, you get line variation like this. Now, what I'm going to do finally is write the word flex with as much pressure as I can to show you how well the nib flexes and as you can see there is very little in the way of flex in this pen. We move on to the Sailor 1911 standard with a Steve Meister nib. This was a lot drier and the quick Fox and as you can see, it offers more line variation. It too is an italic. This one, as I said, with just two tines as opposed to three. Nice line variation. And this one is actually a bit um, springier than the platinum, which you can see in writing like this. Nice bit of spring. Now, the Nippon set, so far I've been using um, the um, uh, Sailor gentle apricot ink. This pen was already inked up with something else. I'm sorry, forgive me, but here we have the Noodler's Nippon set and this is a round nib also quite wet wetter than the other two um, but this one has no natural line variation I would say. Maybe a very very tiny bit but a lot less than the other two because it's a, it's a much rounder nib, not so much an italic like those other two. Although you do seem to get a little bit of an italic line variation there. Also quite nice line variation in this regard. And when it comes to flex, this pen is a whole different ball game from the other two because as you can see, a little bit of railroading there but I was really pushing it to the limits you get a much much greater amount of flex out of this one than the other two and then finally uh, the Waterman 94 this now has a, a mixture of two inks it was not cleaned 100% so sorry about that I was also wrong in the um, um, talk part of this video this nib is actually a bit broader than the Noodler's nib I th in my recollection it was a bit finer this is the Waterman 94 with music nib and as you can see it's a bit of a um, uh, an italic nib too which definitely offers line variation naturally without any pressure and they call this a wet noodle pen because it really offers a lot of line variation and as you can see when I use it like this you'll see what I'm talking about. This is a huge amount of line variation. Much more than the other pens will ever offer. But that comes at a price. This is a vintage pen. You don't find so many of these nibs, for example, on eBay. So very hard to obtain. But if you find one and you want flex, you could definitely, you definitely do worse than buying this one. So. Here we have the flag shootout. Let me zoom in a little. Oh, sorry, the, the uh, music nib shootout. Let me zoom in a bit and just slowly 
show you the different pens, what they can do, and the very impressive amount of flex this final pen offers. Uh, guys, I hope this was useful. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed the um, Music Nib shootout, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.